What is up, voice heads? Welcome back to the show, the voice head show. Uh, today, we've got a very special singer that we are going to be taking a look at, and that is none other than uh, Mr. Steve Perry of Journey fame. Uh, Journey had been around for a while. They were this up and coming prog rock band that had been kind of up and coming for like a little too long. And finally, an agent who got to know Steve Perry was like, you got to work with this guy. So it was kind of a surprise, one of those rock and roll magic stories where they had returned to their kind of uh, haunt, which was uh, the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco. And Steve Perry joined them on stage for the first time. They booked him as their Portuguese roadie friend um, to not let this, uh, their uh, previous singer know that he'd been ostensibly replaced. Um, they brought him on stage and it was just absolute magic. Uh, if you know Steve Perry and you love Steve Perry, then then you already know. You already know. Uh, Steve Perry is one of those singers who you hear his voice and you, you, all you need is like one vowel for like a second and a half. And you're like, it's Steve Perry. Um, what makes his voice so special? We're going to get into that right now. Um, basically, uh, I mean, the the kind of the monster in the room is, of course, going to be breath distortion. Uh, you can't really talk about doing a Steve Perry sound without talking about breath distortion. He's very, very nasal. And the thing that makes Steve Perry different than most other rock and roll singers, certainly that we look at on this podcast, is he's got this really dropped kind of R&B larynx. Uh, he's not as low as Frank Sinatra. It's not really possible to sing uh, the way he does with that, that low a, a, um, uh, a larynx. But uh, certainly if you know most of the other singers that we've looked at on this podcast, whether it's Axl Rose or Brian Johnson – or Bon Scott, or you know any of those kind of like hard rockers, uh, you're going to notice a big difference uh, in that the the larynx is dropped. Um, there's singers like uh, Rob Halford or Freddie Mercury where their kind of trademark is is like these surprises, you know, these like little vocal surprises. So you know, one of my favorite examples is um, uh, Rob Halford singing "Lightning to Strike," where he's like walking through fire and in the light, waiting for lightning to strike, lightning to strike. You know, and he'll change his vocalis kind of on a dime. Um, you know, like a, a like a martial artist who's you know jumping around, flipping and kicking and rolling backwards and punching. Um, but then there's that other kind of martial artist, right? The one that seems to like never really be moving at all. And they're just kind of like in their element and just perfectly still like water. Uh, and Steve Perry uh, is that kind of singer. Again, because you know instantly that it's Steve Perry. He's got this tremendous consistency that he brings to everything that he does. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get that consistency. And then uh, I'm also going to show you how to get that uh just really kind of magical movement that he also captures and brings to everything that he does. Uh, and that is with resonance. Okay. Um, so again, going back to the vocal distortion, uh, the breath distortion that he uses, um, you know, in a song like, uh, Oh Sherry or something. Uh, let me just add a little sauce to the vocals, right. As we do some minor demonstrations right now. Uh, you know, oh, Sherry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, now, one of the things that you will find that Steve Perry, um, so that basically one of the things that made me not sound like him was that my larynx kind of starts moving up to hit those notes. So try this with me right now. Take uh, take one of your hands, your your favorite hand, and hold your larynx down as you do it, right? So instead of going, oh, Sherry, hold on, take your larynx and go, oh, Sherry, hold on, hold on, hold on, to your larynx. Did you hear that? How it just kind of like opened up and got a little bit deeper? Now, obviously, you don't see... Steve Perry doing that on stage, um, that'd be a little bit silly if you did. Um, but let me tell you when you're practicing how to sing like this, it is really good to hold that down. And with a singer like this, where, where they've just got this tremendous consistency with everything you do as you're working and as you're singing through and preparing the song, 
you want to think of it as just like ironing, ironing, ironing through like a, you know, a shirt or a, or a pants that are as long pants that are as long as the song. Right. And you just want to get over any little spot where it starts to get a little bit hiccupy or a little bit weird. And you just want that whole thing to be really, really, really smooth. Um, because that is kind of, especially in the studio, what we've come to know and love and expect and adore in Steve Perry. Um, another reason that I'm not going to sound like him as much as I sound like Brian Johnson is, is just genetics. You know, um, I think, probably is a kind of a northern western european dude um you know i just my sinuses are shaped a, sh a certain way and his sinuses are shaped a certain way he's portuguese um is, i yeah his, his parents were both uh from portugal um and so his sinuses are just gonna kind of do a certain thing um and i can only kind of like try to modify it so much. Um, one of my voice teachers, Justin Stoney, he basically said that like, if we didn't have a head, if you could just kind of like pop my head off and keep, uh, keep me alive. Right. Um, and I was singing, all you would hear is like, just vocal cords together, buzzing could barely hear it. Right. And that would be the same with anybody. That'd be the same with Johnny Cash, Freddie Mercury, whoever, right. You would, all you would hear is the tiny little vocal cords buzzing right on this, you know, decapitated head. Um, so, but then you take our individual heads and you stick them on, you know, if you took Steve Perry's head and stuck it on me, I would sound like Steve Perry because you know, those sinuses, and those, um, you know, those nasal cavities, the pharynx, the larynx, all of these resonation chambers, um, a little bit of the chest resonance, of course, is going to kick in there. But but this is really where our, the fingerprint of our sound comes from. Um, but so let's kind of focus more on on doing the technique that they do rather than, you know, trying to get an exact voice match where. You know, we, we would kick off like a YouTube Google sensor to be like, oh, you're stealing this. Right. Uh, that, would, that would be pretty tricky to do. And and, you know, with all the work I'm putting into this channel, not ideal either. OK, so hold that larynx down. Just a small town girl. Put a little stank on there. Right. And also, if we were standing, that would be better. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. You want to get that breathiness in there. Um, now, another really cool thing that Steve Perry did that uh, I got from this one singing teacher. Maybe I can put it in the line notes because uh, I was looking at like other videos on how to sing like Steve Perry. And I was moderately disappointed, except for this one. It was really, really good. And so one of the things that he pointed out is that like while his larynx stays down, does not move while he's singing. It doesn't matter if it's the hard rockers, the soft rockers, the ballads, you know, the kind of jamboree you know whatever any, any anything in the kind of the wide breadth of like tempos and styles that journey is able to credibly pull off across different decades and stuff um there there is that consistency in the larynx um performance wise he has that like energy where he's like kind of crying and kind of smiling at the same time where he's it's it's almost like you, you know that feeling of being like totally exhausted and ready to cry but like watching your kid grow up or something it's this you know kind of sweet sadness and um as jonathan kane the keyboard player from the band said he you know so somebody was asking like hey jonathan kane how come steve perry left what's going on everybody loves him we we, we can't get enough uh we can't get enough why, why why would he not want to stick around and keep keep singing with the band and and what jonathan kane the keyboard uh songwriter um said was well, uh, you know, he's he's not just a pure showman the way, um, you know, uh, uh, oh God, from um, uh, Mick Jagger is like the example that he gave of kind of like a pure showman like Steve Perry. He really cuts himself and he bleeds every time he sings a little bit, you know, so um, as another uh, famous uh person uh i believe it was peter o'toole who was a british actor said uh you can fake a lot of things as an actor but you can't fake pain you have to feel it right so that's 
just kind of a part of the Steve Perry thing, what makes him so magical. Um, now, so he has this beautiful imagery and he's able to express this beautiful imagery. Um, but by what kind of vocal mechanism is that being communicated to the audience? And this is what the uh, singing teacher I was talking about, really good singing teacher. He's got like half a million views. Uh, he's bald, though. I have better hair. Right. Than that one guy. Um, so uh, what he said was that basically what Steve Perry does, and this is a technique he got from his favorite singer, who was Sam Cooke, uh, because, again, Steve Perry was this, um, you know, this R&B Motown guy. He was, a, you know, obsessed with Motown. And then he got stuck into this rock band that was pl playing like prog rock. And that's where you get Journey from. Um, so his idol was Sam Cooke. And Sam Cooke would do this thing. Uh, where he would kind of play with the placement of his resonance chambers, basically kind of like using, I guess it would be like the back of your tongue to move that resonance chambers for, forward and back, forward and back. So a lot of times, you know, um, uh, a lot of his song lyrics are constructed by this way of like object, environment, object, environment, right? Just a small town girl, object, living in a lonely world environment, right? So what he would do is he would phrase it like, uh, you know, and use the resonance like, uh, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Kind of straight through, right? But so check out this, right? Just a small town girl, mask front, living in a lonely world. I got a little pitchy there, but did you feel how the resonance moved back and it kind of takes the camera of, in the listener's ear and pulls it back? Just a city boy. Forward. Monterey's in South Detroit. Pulls out into the context. Um, again, he did a bunch of takes of this. I'm just doing, trying to do one. So be nice. Just get the point. All right. Uh